fire was added in the latest update for Sea of Thieves. And as it's so new, there's still going to be some undiscovered potentials for fire. I'm going to talk to you about my experiences and my opinions on fire and how I think you should use it in PvP. Fire is a brand new mechanic to Sea of Thieves. So as it's a brand new mechanic, we need to know everything we can about fire before we can take it into PvP. I'm going to give you a list of cans and cants and read them off like bullet points. You can hold five firebombs. They work as a mini light similar to cursed cannonballs. The trajectory of a cannonball is the same as a firebomb when fired from the cannon. It has its own unique in-flight sound. If you hit a player with a firebomb, it will do 30% damage over around 15 seconds. It doesn't do any initial hit damage, but it does tick quite quickly. 30% is a good number to remember because if you can hit somebody with a firebomb and then snipe them with an eye of reach, you're probably going to kill them. Firebombs when fired from a cannon don't cause impact damage, but they do transfer the fire directly through the hole to the other side and set the ship on fire. It takes around 70 seconds or so before a hole is created if it's not put out. And it seems to be more of a proximity damage, a bit like a mermaid from the statues, rather than an actual hitbox damage. Fire spreads really slowly, but when it does create a hole, it creates a tier 2 hole. If you throw any water at some fire, it will soak the water up and not put it back onto your ship, so you don't need to worry about refilling your ship with water. If you do get set on fire, you can run into other people, friendlies or enemies, to set them on fire. But when you are on fire, you can't be set on fire a second time. It does not stack. So you can use this to your advantage by running around the ship to a safe point if you need to. When you need to put yourself out, all you need to do is jump into some water or scoop some water up in a bucket and use your ADS button on your controller or your mouse. For me, it's right click. If you do do this and you're standing on top of some already burning fire, you'll put yourself out and the fire you're standing on. Prolonged exposure to the fire from the mast, the helm, or the anchor will slowly do damage over time. It will take the mast down, but it takes a long time. It takes around 70 seconds per hole, as I've already said. So it takes a long time to take down each mast. It takes the same amount of time to create damage to the helm and to the anchor, but it won't drop the anchor. If you leave something on the cooking station, it will eventually set your ship on fire from that point. It does burn skeletons really well. I'm not sure if it burns different skeletons of different types at different rates, but it does seem to be quite effective. It will cook animals if you leave them as well. So if you stack a lot of animals up in one go, I think you can probably cook them all in one go. You can set skeleton ships on fire with it. The skeletons on board will not put the fire out, but the fire will go out shortly after it's been put onto the ship. If you have any amount of water in the hull of your ship and a firebomb hits that area, it will not start a fire and it will not take the water out of the hull of your ship. Kegs, when set off, will cause fire to happen as well. They can also be set off by fire, which means if you have kegs in your crow's nest and your mast is on fire, eventually those kegs will be set off by the fire that is on your mast. It takes around 15 seconds from when you're set on fire to the maximum amount of damage to happen to you. But if you do die to fire, you'll now get the red flame if you try to go to the lantern that is on the Ferry of the Damned, which means you no longer need to go to the Devil's Roar to get the red flame for the Fort of the Damned or for any other reason. If you're in a storm, the lightning will now set you on fire and it will set your ship on fire. But because of the rain, if it's an open exposed part of your deck or ship, it will set on fire and then immediately go out. However, if there's fire below deck, it will not put this out unless it's in the bottom part of the hull. Lastly, pets don't like fire and they will make noise when there is fire around, which means if you put your pet near your cooking station and you start cooking and start setting on fire, they'll start squawking or shrieking and they'll let you know as well as they'll let you know if fire is in any other parts of your ship there's not as many can'ts when it comes to fire but there's definitely some important ones you can't set the meg on fire you can't set the kraken on fire i don't know if you can kill them by directly hitting them or not if you throw the firebomb on the ground it doesn't set the ground on fire it only affects players and ships including skeleton ships if you are on fire you can't emote which means if you get hit by a control ball, like a control curse cannonball, it will not affect you. 
So if somebody fires a jig ball at you and you're on fire, you won't start dancing, which you can use to your advantage. Because if you are dancing, somebody could throw a firebomb at you and get you out of that state. Because as soon as you go on fire, all emotes get cancelled. I can see this being a bit of a problem when it comes to the Devil's Roar again and tucking potentially. But I'm not sure if the volcanoes themselves cause fire to your ship. I'm pretty sure they do. So be aware of that if you are tucking in the Devil's Roar. Now that's the cans and cans out of the way, let's talk about the three main ways that you're going to use these firebombs when it comes to PvP. You're going to use them when you're boarding, you're going to use them when you're fighting on an island, and you're going to use them with cannon to cannon fire. With the last one, using your cannons being the least effective, especially at the start of a fight. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Going back to boarding, there's definitely places on a ship that's far more effective to use a firebomb on than others. If you can hit a player while you're placing them in these places, even better. But what you're looking to do is place firebombs in strategic places so that you can defend them easily while the fire does its work to create holes on the ship and create problems and do damage to the players as well. On a sloop, and in this order, this is where you want to place your firebombs. The first one you want to drop is under the bowsprit in the bottom part of the deck of a sloop. Then you want to put one behind the map table then in the choke points, and then on the helm or mast, depending on how many you've got or what you want to hit. And the reason why you do this is because if you place it below on the sloop, you can stand below on the deck and you can defend that position while the fire does its work to create an additional hole. If there's already water in the bottom of the sloop and a hole, then you don't need to place it there. But if there's no hole and a little bit of water, it's probably more beneficial to scoop water out so you can create fire below deck create a below deck hole then you want to create fire behind the map table because that will then eventually create holes at the back of the ship you want to put it behind the map table because it's kind of out of the way and i feel like people will see it's behind the map table and think they won't have to deal with it because they don't need to run through it then you want to place it at a choke point so on the top of the stairs in the middle part of the deck where they have to run through to get to you this will give you two things it will create damage to them if they run through it and it will also make them focus on that part of the fire rather than the fire that's behind the map table as well. Lastly, you want to hit the mast or the helm because eventually you want to do enough damage to them to take them out of the fight a bit longer if you need to, if you need to bring your ship back. Or if you die and you need to get back, you need to just keep them busy. That's your main aim there. On the brig, it's very similar. You want to place one at the far end underneath the bowsprit. You want to do this first, same with the sloop because once water starts coming in, that fire is going to go out. You want to immediately, if you can, place a firebomb in the sleeping area and then at the bottom of the stairs or the top of the stairs until water starts coming in, just to stop them from coming down, to get them to focus on that bit of fire while you watch to stop them from coming down to put the fire out. I did a couple of tests with the brig and I placed a firebomb under the bowsprit and then in the sleeping quarters. And again, in the sleeping quarters, that's where the holes were created first. Even though there was that time difference between me placing it at the front of the ship and then placing it in the sleeping quarters. However, when you place it in the sleeping quarters, the two tests I did, each time there was three holes created. And the brig filled up really, really fast from that. So I think fire is the most effective against the brig in its current state. And because you place it in the sleeping quarters, they can't get any water in there to put the fire out while you defend without coming down and exposing themselves to you, which again is why you then place fire bombs into the choke points. The galleon is definitely the hardest one to do any damage with with fire in a quick manner. Same as the brig and the sloop. You want to get to the bottom deck, place it underneath the bowsprit at the end so it's well out of the way so they've got a long way to run. You want to go back up throw some fire in the middle deck where the ammo is then you want to place some fire on the first set of stairs at the bottom again that's a choke point then you want to defend from here these are all the strategic positions that i've found right now maybe it'll change in the future but these are the places that i think you should throw them first if you find more fire bombs you have more teammates just chuck them in as many different places as you can create as much chaos as you can but you want to put them in places where they're not next to each other so one bucket doesn't take out as much fire as it possibly can create little pockets of fire in different places 
to make it more chaotic for people. If you're fighting somebody on an island, they're very likely to use hard cover to protect themselves while they try and peek you and shoot you. You can use fire bombs in these instances to flush them out or to cause damage to them. They're very unlikely to have a bucket of water on them anyway, but if they do, you'll probably hear it. And then you can throw a second one to cause more damage to them. Once they're on fire, they're probably going to want to try and get out of there or they're going to be easy to snipe with the eye of reach. Just be aware that you cannot set the ground on fire. It does have an AOE splash damage effect, so you can hit multiple people at the same time, but it will not set the ground on fire. So it needs to be quite a direct hit. The third and last place you're really going to use firebombs is from your own cannons. I mentioned at the start that this is going to be the least effective. This is just because it's not easy to land a cannonball accurately and consistently over different scenarios and terrains like it is to be able to get on a ship and throw your firebomb. So you might have five on you, you're not going to land them all and you're not going to land them where you need to. But when you do fire fire at an enemy ship, what you want to be doing is landing it in key positions, primarily where the cannons are to stop them from firing back at you. It's going to be a more effective peace ball, essentially. You want to land it on the masts, so eventually the masts will go down or they'll have to deal with it, or at the helm. These are the key points. Oh, and the last place is the choke points where they will bail from, etc. Because you want to try and do damage to them, so you can use your eye of reach to be able to snipe them. If you couple this with a venom ball, I'm not 100% sure that the damages stack. This is something that I would need to test, or you guys can let me know. But I'm pretty sure they will stack. Then you can do a lot of damage quite quickly. If you want to know more about the Venom Ball, I do have a video on the Cursed Cannonballs, which I believe is still relevant. Nothing has been changed in this latest update. Unlike the Sword Lunging video, which may as well just be the basics at this point. I haven't spoken about the arena yet when it comes to fire, because I think you're going to use firebombs in the arena more for island fights and potentially the odd fire to shoot a ship with just to cause a little bit of disruption you haven't got as much time in the arena as you have in adventure mode because the arena matches are timed 24 minutes and if it takes 70 seconds or so for one hole to be created it's a long time to take out to be able to sink a ship you're far better off trying to cannon them and just filling their ship up with cannon holes essentially because you gain more points that way i don't think you gain points for fire ticking on a ship the last thing i want to talk about is two ways to counter fire the first way we already mentioned but i'm going to bring it up again if you're on fire and there's a point on your ship that's on fire and you have a bucket of water stand on that point that's on fire because you're not going to take any more damage and then use the bucket on yourself you'll put yourself out and you'll put the fire out that you're standing on top of this means you don't have to use two buckets worth of water because the water butt itself only holds three charges essentially of of water the next one I found, I actually found by accident, I was just messing around when I was recording some footage. And what you need to do is put a very small amount of water in the hull of your ship. Now, if you don't know this, if you bucket water onto your ship, it puts a very minimal amount onto your ship. So you can't fill a ship up very fast. It's different to when your ship takes on water through holes and you bucket that amount out. Because when you chuck that onto another ship, that's a lot more water. So if you jump into the water, scoop up some water from the sea chuck it back on your ship any fire that is created on the bottom part of your ship in the bottom hull i'm not sure what it's called does not ignite so it's actually a good defense and it also doesn't eat the water that's down there as well like it does when you chuck a bucket of water onto some fire i'm not sure if this is intentional or not or if this is an oversight by rare but at the moment it's a great way to do it at least on the sloop. I haven't actually tested on the brig and the galleon. So if you guys want to test for me, let me know in the comments. I'd appreciate that. That's pretty much everything I've got when it comes to fire and this new update. I've been meaning to make a couple of videos, but I knew this fire was coming. So I wasn't able to make the videos because it would make the next ones I'm about to make completely obsolete. So there'll be new videos coming soon. The clips you've seen in this are from when I live stream on Twitch. I mostly stream Sea of Thieves, but I'm quite into Tarkov at the moment. So if you want to come over and check that out, I'd appreciate it. If you think I've missed anything when it comes to fire and little handy tips and tricks that you do or you know of, let me know again in the comments below. And we'll probably revisit fire again at some point in the future 
when there's been a bit more experience on it and yeah that's that's really it from me i'm tojo i've been your temporary ship's captain i'll catch you on the seas i guess oh <laughs>